every culture has its own unique set of folk practices. Many of them have long and complicated histories and obscure origins, and it is therefore easy to take for granted their meaning or purpose. And this is true even within the religious realm. Religion has historically been such a major part of many major cultures, including in the West, that many traditional folk practices, either in whole or in part, can be traced back to religious origins. Yet because the origins of some traditions are obscure, it is easy to ignore or minimize the religious origins of these traditions and give them a more generic, secular meaning. This is the case with St. Valentine's Day. This holiday was originally a Catholic holiday meant to commemorate the early Christian saint named Valentine, but has since evolved into a holiday celebrating love in its most general sense. Current traditions associated with St. Valentine's Day include giving cards, gifts, and chocolates to those with whom one has a romantic interest, going on romantic dates with spouses or significant others, watching romantic movies, etc. Yet how this holiday went from being a religious feast day to a commercialized expression of love is a long and complicated story. First, some religious context. Valentine's Day is named after Saint Valentine, an early Christian saint who died as a martyr, a martyr being obviously one who was persecuted for their faith. What most people don't know is that the name Valentine refers not to one saint, but to at least two distinct individuals who lived in the early church. Most of what we know about Saint Valentine is derived from a text known as the Roman Martyrology. The Roman Martyrology was inspired by a series of religious texts within the Catholic Church that spoke of the lives of the early Christian martyrs, who, in the early days of Christianity, were some of the most popular saints in the Church. The earliest martyrologies date back to the early Middle Ages. The first edition of the Roman Martyrology, as it exists today, was published in Rome in 1583. In 1584, the third edition of this text was published, also in Rome, and this was also the first version of the text to include an official papal stamp of approval, thereby allowing it to be used in the private devotion as well as in the public liturgical devotion of the entire church. The Roman Martyrology draws from a series of old historical documents and oral traditions concerning the saints of the early church. According to the Roman Martyrology, there were several different martyr saints honored on this day, February 14th. Two of them were Saint Valentine. Both Saint Valentines lived and died sometime in the 3rd century. One of them was a priest from Rome who was martyred around the year 270 AD. The holy priest Valentine was known for his preaching and miracle walking. He was eventually brought before the Roman Emperor Claudius, who then ordered that he be sentenced to death, simply for being a Christian. Saint Valentine was beaten with clubs and eventually beheaded. The other Saint Valentine was the bishop of the city of Interamna, now known as Terni in the southern part of the Umbria region in central Italy. We are uncertain exactly when he lived and died, but most historians place his life sometime in the second half of the third century. Because he preached the Christian faith publicly, he was arrested and forced to recant his beliefs under pain of torture. And when he refused, the prefect of the city, who was sort of like the mayor, a man named Placidius, took him out of the dungeon and sentenced him to death. The medieval British historian William of Malmesbury notes that there are some oral traditions that state that the Bishop Valentine was executed near the Flaminian Gate, known in Italian as the Porto del Popolo, though this isn't explicitly mentioned in the Roman Martyrology. 
Because both these valentines were martyred on February 14th, the church created a singular feast day to commemorate both of these saints. Yet, how did St. Valentine's Day go from a religious holy day to commemorate a relatively obscure early Christian martyr to a capitalist holiday that we use as an excuse to buy stuff to impress our crush? Well, there are a few different historical reasons which connect St. Valentine with the concept of romantic love. Firstly, it's an established historical fact that the Emperor Claudius began to take part in a series of relatively unpopular military campaigns. Thus, in order to maintain the support of his troops, the Emperor Claudius stated that no soldiers in the Roman military were allowed to marry or have children. The intention was that, without a wife and family, they would feel more loyal to the state than to their own private intentions. Yet some early Christian sources say that St. Valentine, the priest from Rome, would secretly go around marrying Roman soldiers who saw the injustice of this law. This act of rebellion, on top of his promotion of a religion that was deemed illegal by the Roman government, was the reason why he was martyred. As Christianity began to spread beyond the Mediterranean into other parts of Europe throughout the late antique and early medieval period, so did devotion to the major saints of early church history, including St. Valentine. Throughout Europe, churches and chapels dedicated to St. Valentine were built, and the church yearly celebrated his feast day on February 14th. Nonetheless, St. Valentine's connection to romantic love still remained rather vague at best. The type of love embodied by the stories of St. Valentine was of a more spiritual nature. St. Valentine loved God, he loved the church, he loved truth, to such an extent that he was willing to die rather than reject Christ or the church. It wasn't until the height of the medieval period that St. Valentine began to be connected with love of a more romantic nature. One of the earliest examples we have of St. Valentine being connected to love of this sort was in the 14th century, in one of the poems of the famous British poet Geoffrey Chaucer, who, in his work The Parliament of the Fowls, notes that it was common for birds to mate on or around St. Valentine's Day. Where this belief originated is unknown. It is a common fact that most animals tend to mate during the spring months. Some have suggested that Geoffrey Chaucer had some familiarity with Italian culture, and knew of a saint popular among Italian Catholics named Saint Valentine of Genoa, who died in the early 4th century. Saint Valentine of Genoa's feast day was celebrated in May, towards the end of spring, during the height of mating season. We also know that there were many springtime festivities that were commonly associated with the feast day of St. Valentine of Genoa. Thus, Chaucer was connecting the mating of birds with St. Valentine of Genoa, not St. Valentine of Rome or St. Valentine of Terni. Yet, later generations of writers less familiar with Italian culture confused St. Valentine of Genoa with the two earlier St. Valentines whose feast day was celebrated on February 14th, thus leading to a sort of medieval meme that connected St. Valentine with mating, and therefore romance. Other historians have suggested a much simpler theory. Since February marked the transition from winter to spring, many medieval calendars marked February as the beginning of springtime. Chaucer's imagery of St. Valentine being associated with love of a sort of romantic or erotic nature remains throughout the late medieval and renaissance era, so much so that within a relatively brief period of time, poets began to call their lovers valentines. A few different things later on in the modern era began to solidify this trend. Protestant Christians did not emphasize devotion to the saints as much as Catholic Christians did. 
Nonetheless, some Protestants, including and especially the Anglicans, did place a strong emphasis on the saints of the early days of Christianity. Some early Anglican theologians attempted to distance St. Valentine from his romantic connotations, and this was a part of a larger project found among some early Protestants to sort of separate significant saints from church history from certain specifically Catholic connotations. This can be seen in a famous 17th century English poet and playwright, Benjamin Johnson, who himself was a Protestant, who wrote of how St. Valentine gave us an example of the virtues of the Christian life, such as helping the poor, giving the dead a proper burial, living a life of piety, and, most relevant to our discussion, spurring lust and immodesty. What you see here is an early Protestant supporter trying to take St. Valentine and separate him from the connotations that he had in popular late medieval folk piety. Yet none of these attempts made the connection between St. Valentine's Day and love go away. One 18th century commentary on the Book of Common Prayer, the main text used by the Church of England that outlines how Anglican religious services are performed, noted how, in British popular culture, St. Valentine was often associated with romantic expressions of love, and the 19th century British historian Henry Bourne, in his work The Antiquities of the Common People, not only notes that St. Valentine was popularly connected with romantic love, but suggested a very specific historical reason for this. According to him, St. Valentine was one of the few early saints who rejected the notion of priestly celibacy. The thing is, this probably isn't true. One, we have very little historical evidence for this claim because we have very little historical evidence concerning St. Valentine in general. All we know is that he existed and we know a few facts about him. So we have very few historical pieces of information about St. Valentine. Second of all, in the early church, the only people who practiced celibacy universally, that is, across the board, were monks and nuns. The church was a little bit more lenient with regard to priests and bishops and deacons in terms of letting them marry. So it wasn't a universal norm in the early church that priests, deacons, or bishops not marry. So chances are he had nothing to rebel against. Now one interesting thing to note is that there are many saints who, in popular British culture, were associated with love not just St. Valentine. These traditions, most probably, are some of the last few remnants of the medieval Catholic heritage of Great Britain that carried over into British culture even after the spread of Protestantism in England. Some examples include St. Agnes, St. David, and St. Anne, as well as, obviously, St. Valentine. One common celebration on these feast days was to pick a name of a random person and begin to romance with them, hoping one day to marry them. It also wasn't uncommon for people to pray to these saints to ask for a sign of who their future spouse would be. Unfortunately, these feast days would often become associated with partying and licentiousness. Yet even though these more extreme examples were more common among the peasants, it also wasn't uncommon to have other similar, though more quote-unquote sophisticated traditions among the intellectual elites in British society. It wasn't uncommon, for example, for poets to write love poems on Valentine's Day. Such traditions in the English-speaking world go back to at least the 15th century, and really started to blow up in popularity starting in the 17th century. Although most of these poems derive from the intellectual elites, they reflect a much wider tradition of reciting poems or love songs or offering special greetings to people on St. Valentine's Day. 
Nonetheless, with the emergence of the modern-day middle class, many of the traditions once confined to the upper crust of British society started to become more widespread. Many of the folk traditions associated with St. Valentine's Day, including those in the English-speaking world, remained primarily a European phenomenon. In early American culture, many of these traditions remained relatively rare and therefore, over the generations, relatively unknown. Some early pieces of American literature reference these traditions, but based on what we know about early American culture, these traditions were not that widespread in the United States itself. As the 19th century progressed, American culture started to develop its own sense of self-identity. As it did so, it began to look to Europe. Many Americans would either respond to or against certain European ways of doing things in order to differentiate American culture from European culture, or they would take many European traditions and Americanize them. And this is what eventually happened with St. Valentine's Day. The earliest reference to the tradition of sending love-themed greeting cards to friends or romantic interests being found in the United States was in Philadelphia in the 1820s. By the 1840s, this tradition spread to New York City and to the various cultural centers of New England. By the late 1840s, this tradition was well established in the United States, and throughout the middle of the 19th century, it continued to grow in popularity. This eventually led to a major shift that laid the basis for the notion of Valentine's Day as it exists today. As Lay Eric Schmidt, a historian who specializes in the religious and cultural aspects of American history noted, quotes, the new rituals associated with St. Valentine's Day were built mostly on a commercial medium, on the understanding of the Valentine as a commodity." Unquote. He goes on to note how in the early modern era, it was a tradition on St. Valentine's Day to pick lots for romantic partners, and these romantic partners were called Valentines. Eventually, throughout the 19th century, the term Valentine began to be used to refer to items, not people, and more specifically, items exchanged among romantic partners. This made it easier to commercialize the holiday. As some have pointed out, the mindset of business owners prior to the Industrial Revolution was simply to work. You were good at making a particular product or service, and the community needed it, and so you made it. The purpose of business was simply to produce some good or service that was needed. Yet the Industrial Revolution was motivated by a new perspective on economics, namely, finding new and innovative ways of increasing one's profit margins. Business owners looked for anything to capitalize on, including more general cultural and religious traditions and symbols. Schmidt would thus go on to write, quote, In contrast to the hard-working Puritan shopkeepers who in their diligence misguidedly spawned holidays, the forward-thinking merchant was instead to be a, quote, leader in the matter of observing holidays. This was the basic reformulation. Holidays, instead of being impediments to disciplined economic advancement, could be geared to retailing, consumption, and profit. Time is money. The commercialization of the calendar gave new meaning to this old Yankee maxim." Unquote. As time went on, St. Valentine's Day started to become much more of a common celebration among the American people. Yet, what became popular was the folk traditions surrounding the holiday rather than the religious traditions that inspired these folk practices. And this sort of makes sense. For most of America's early history, Catholicism was a relative minority, and thus most Americans were ignorant or rather culturally disconnected from the true religious origins of the holidays. 
Ironically, this holiday is inspired by a saint whose feast day is no longer officially commemorated by the Catholic Church. You see, the Catholic Church celebrated the feast day of St. Valentine from the 3rd century up until the middle of the 20th century. Yet, over the course of the past few decades, relatively obscure saints, that is, saints where information about them is relatively scarce, or saints where there is doubt as to whether or not they were actually real historical figures, were dropped from the calendar of the Latin Rite of Catholicism. Pope Paul VI, for example, dropped the Feast of St. Valentine from the official Roman calendar in 1969 though he is still officially recognized as a saint by the church. And parishes that are named after St. Valentine, or communities among whom devotion to St. Valentine is popular, are still allowed to celebrate his feast day. What is the purpose of all of this? Why should anyone care? Well, firstly, on a purely cultural or anthropological level, the religious influence in our society is much greater than people today give credit to. By studying the cultural history of man, we can thus uncover the religious, including Catholic or Christian, influences that often go overlooked or minimized. Yet there is a deeper lesson to be learned. In calling to mind the religious origins of this holiday, we should also keep in mind the deeper spiritual and moral lessons. When you compare what St. Valentine originally represented as opposed to what he represents now, what you see is the reality that there are multiple different types of love. The traditions surrounding St. Valentine's Day should cause us to think deeply about the nature of romance, of marriage, and love. Yet we can conform marriage or romantic relationships to God's love only if we look at this type of love in light of higher forms of love, which are represented in what St. Valentine, the modern clergyman, represented. That is, an unconditional love of God, an unconditional love of Christ and His Church, an unconditional love of truth, a love of virtue, and a love of neighbor as oneself.